Sheila. Oh. How did it... Wait! Oh. Are you all right? I think I've sprained my wrist. No. Oh, sh can I help? I'm almost a doctor. <laughs> almost? Yeah, a medical student. Let me have a look. Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh, it's my pleasure. It makes a nice change from dissecting frogs. <laughs> How was Warren? Oh, usual seething mass of barely suppressed violence. I hate to think what he gets up to when there's a full moon. But did he like your proposal? Not much. The fact that I haven't got my third lodger didn't help much. Neither did the fact that I kept seeing him with his little loofah in his hand. <laughs> little loofah? Yes, anyway, he said he'd let me know tomorrow. Excuse me. Does that hurt? Yes. Does that hurt? Yes. Do that. Ah! You sprained your wrist. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Convinced it was my appendix. Uh, Richard, he's only trying to help. Oh, I'm sorry, old lad. I really should be directing my anger at the damn fool who left the parcel there. Oh, um, you are. <laughs> sorry. Well, what's in there? Bricks? No, heavier than that, actually. Medical textbooks. Oh, fine. Crippled in the cause of science. Say no more. Richard, he said he was sorry. You could have looked where you were going. Well, as usual, Sheila, I only had eyes for you. Oh. Ah! Oh. <laughs> You'll have to drive, I'm afraid. You really ought to get that bandage, you know. I'd be only too happy to do it. Oh, how can we ever thank you? Well, actually, there might be a way. Steve, <laughs> Henry, I'll just see if the kettle's boiled. Thanks. No, this is a bit much, Sheila. A man causes me GBH, and now you're offering him a room. Oh, stop grumbling, or I'll put bromide in your coffee. <laughs> so at least he's got a worthwhile career lined up. More than I can say for our young friend upstairs. His only contribution to society would appear to be an impersonation of the Blackpool Illuminations. <laughs> I like it. Oh, I'm glad. What I particularly like about it is there's no medical students down there. I'm sorry. But I'm sharing a flat with four of them at present, you see. That's why I want to move. They're always talking shop. And, well, for some reason, I'm one of those people who finds it very difficult to cope with in-depth discussions of intestines over dinner. I don't think you're alone. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm honest, I find it hard to cope with intestines at any time of day. <laughs> hate the sight of blood. In fact, I'm really rather squeamish. Has it ever occurred to you that you may have chosen the wrong career? Oh, frequently. My father assures me I'll get used to it, but I'm not so sure. Is your father a doctor? Yes, and his father. And his father. Uh. That's the trouble, you see. So much is expected of me. Sometimes wish I could just call it a day and be a lollipop man. <laughs> well, I think you tie a terrific bandage, Henry. My advice to you is to stick it out. As the actress said to the bishop. Uh, Chris, Chris, this is Henry. Hi. Uh, hello. Henry may be staying with us. Chris already is, so you may wish to reconsider. <laughs> Come on, forgive and forget, eh? What? Well, I'm assuming that little dig was inspired by our dust up at the front door earlier. Water under the bridge, as far as I'm concerned. Pals. Hi, <laughs> young <laughs> Sorry. I'm just popping out some spare batteries for my costume. <laughs> Prime candidate for a lobotomy when you've got a spare moment. <laughs> so I came home and spent the rest of the afternoon in the bath. In the bath? Well, I needed a long, hot soak to debaglify myself. <laughs> you have my sympathy, Mrs. Haddon. Another notch on the unemployment statistics. I know the feeling. I'm a notch. You're the all-time notch. Are you going to tell Richard? Oh, well, as guarantor of my bank loan, I suppose I'll have to, in time. I don't think I'll tell him why I was fired, though. Ah, well, tomorrow's another day. No kidding, Henry. And who knows what it may bring. Yes. Well, one thing it will bring is Chris's new roommate, Hamish um. McAlpine. Um. Did somebody gulp, or was it the central heating? I only met Hamish the once. Hamish, the airline steward. He gave me a long, lingering look and said, Well, hello. <laughs> Need I say more? Chris seems to think that Hamish is gay. Cool, you've got a lightning mind, Henry. <laughs> is Hamish gay? Look, when they met, Chris was wearing his disc jockey outfit. Let me put it another way. Hamish was confronted with a blow-dried, besequined vision in a black cat suit, sparkling with tiny fairy lights. It's hardly surprising. Hamish said, well, hello. <laughs> And what did he expect him to say? Do you fancy a pint and a spot of arm wrestling? I don't understand a word of this. What's the matter, Henry? No pictures. <laughs> oh. Do you know, 
The more I read, the more I realise how little I actually know about medicine. Well, this is terrific news for your patients. No, no. Carol, he, he doesn't actually have any patients. One of the great things about the NHS is they don't let medical students loose on members of the public till they've sort of got the hang of it. I hope. <laughs> you will get the hang of it, won't you, Henry? I suppose so, in time. I'll probably be on the geriatric wards by then, as a patient. <laughs> but it's time I was off. Mm. Why don't you have something to eat? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Haddon, but I'm really not hungry. Well, you really shouldn't go to work on a cup of coffee. I if I ate anything now, I'd only regret it at 11. What happens at 11? I'm disemboweling a rat. <laughs> then I've suddenly gone right off my shreddies. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the things we have to go through to become doctors. Oh, never mind, Henry. I'm sure there's others worse off than yourself. Like who, I'd like to know. The rat, for a start. <laughs> well, cheerio, then. Bye. Have a nice day. Are you serious? Where's Chris? Oh, Carol, uh, any thoughts on what film you'd like to see tonight? Oh, yes. Rambo. Rambo? Oh, you don't sound too keen. Well, doesn't that involve Sylvester Stallone wiping out most of Southeast Asia? Oh, I'm sure he does it in the best possible taste. Carol, Henry's been up to his ears in innards all day. Last thing he wants to unwind is more of the same. Evening. Hi. Evening, Chris. There you go. I sold you Die Straits ticket. And it wasn't easy. You should pay me commission. Who did you sell it to? Somebody tasty, I hope. Uh, well, a bit flat-chested, I'm afraid, Chris. But nice looking. Please, Monica, you're making me blush. <laughs> hey? Well, we'd better get a move on if we're going to catch the supporting band. Nobody at college had any money. But Hamish did. So that was lucky, wasn't it? If I get any luckier, I might kill myself. <laughs> Are you coming or not? You and £35 from you, that's 70 plus 50 from you and Hamish makes 70 and 50, which is... 120. Thank you. Good. Well, I'd like to congratulate you all on paying your rent on time. It was a very wise decision, and I trust you make a similar wise decision this time next week. It's our pleasure, Mrs. Haddon. Well, speak for yourself, Henry. You're some kind of masochist. Sorry, did I hear mumbling? Mumbling. Mm. Mumbling, yes. Did I detect a little grumbling among the mumbling? Or was it merely the sound of stones having blood squeezed out of them? Well, all we were doing was quietly celebrating the fact that we've just made you a wealthy woman. Carol, 120 pounds does not make me wealthy. Makes you 120 pounds wealthier than me. Like all the money that comes into my hands, this is merely passing through. Well, I just hope it's going to a good cause. Oh, it couldn't be going to a better one. It's going to my bank manager. Guess what? Electricity bill. Ah. I'll peruse it at leisure in a month or two. Some people, of course, don't pay rent, do they? Well, it's one of the perks of being her daughter. Yes. A dozen eggs. Two dozen eggs. A bag of rice. A sack of rice. <laughs> cereal. Bread. Anti-aircraft gun. Sorry, that seat's taken. Who oh, by? The Invisible Man? He'll do. Well, he's very quiet, isn't he? Which is surprising in a way, since you've just tossed a hard back right between his legs. Oh, don't be frightened, Henry. I'll look after you. Actually, I've got cramp. Cramp? You're on my thigh. Oh, the number of men who must have said that. Uh, I, I can manage. Thank you. Uh, Monica, is there any danger of you helping me out with the washing up? Indeed. Yeah, Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> I love Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> Is it absolutely compulsory to have the Highland hotchpotch, Mrs. Haddon? Do you think Hamish would mind awfully if I just had an omelette instead? I think he'd make an omelette out of you. Oh. But what if we don't like it? I'm sure you'll come to our rescue, Henry. How do you mean? Well, you're a medical man. Presumably you have access to a stomach pump. <laughs> it's all right, Monica. I'll get it. <laughs> Cos this looks as bad as it smells. Oh. Oh, Hamish, this is really good. You sound surprised. Mm. This is great. Mm. I mean, we are talking seriously scrumptious this here. This is absolutely first-rate, mm. Hamish. Mm. To think you prefer an omelette. You prefer an omelette? <laughs> I admit I had reservations, but I was wrong. Very wrong. It's really quite excellent. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, it's the X factor that elevates it to an art form. <laughs>
Libido. What do I get for my libido, Henry? One, Apart from 15 points. <laughs> Have fun. Bon voyage. And you speak French as well. <laughs> oh, I think I'll launch a major offensive on the garden. It's like a jungle out there. If I don't do something soon, we'll have David Bellamy nosing round. You seem to be alone. Yes. We have the house to ourselves, so the last thing we need is an observer. <laughs> what exactly are you suggesting? Can't you guess? Of course. Scrabble. <laughs> ah, but out of letters. So everything depends on my next move. What's the score? Oh, very much neck and neck, isn't it? All I have to do to win is get 548 with my final word. Good luck. Jacksaw. What am I supposed to do with that? Laxoige. Woodlicks. Ah, got it. Ghoulie. <laughs> if you use that R. Brilliant. Igloo. Oh. Yeah, I, I was thinking more in terms of axiology, actually. Ah, axiology, of course. Why on earth didn't I think of that? Probably because I've never heard of it. Oh, it's the, uh, it's the science of the significance of values. You're the most significant man I've ever met, Henry. I think you're brilliant. <laughs> it's just that I've played a lot of Scrabble. Not since you're a genius, and... Well, the fact is, I... And your brain a bit of a turn on. Huh. Excuse me. It's very thirsty work gardening. Anyway, I'm making progress. I'm glad someone is. I just hope your gardening's better than your timing. It's just that I've never seen your room. Right. But... Well, there it is. Huh. And, and you I... can tell so much about a person from their room. Oh, dear. Uh, right. Well, uh, perhaps I can show you some of my equipment. Now you're talking. It's quite old, this. It's a Victorian tongue depressor. Mm, why should anyone want a depressed tongue? Kinky lot, the Victorians. Yes. Um, oh, this is a fairly ancient sphygmomanometer. Oh, I'll get you a new one for Christmas. <laughs> right. Uh, what else can I show you? Are you kidding? Oh. <laughs> Henry, you've got a skeleton in your cupboard. It's my father's. Your father's skeleton? I prefer to keep it out of sight. You mean, that is the actual skeleton of your actual father? <laughs> when I say it's my father's skeleton, I mean... I mean... Yes, yes, it's, it's my father's skeleton. Oh, gosh! Is that the doorbell knocking? <clears throat> Must go. See you, Henry. Thank you, Father. Oh. Henry. You know that skeleton you've got on loan from your dad? Yes. Well, Carol's under the impression that it is your dad, or rather once was. I know. Well, you see, it's rather put her off you. I know. You see, I've been trying to put Carol off me for some time, but um, it's very difficult to do these things without feelings being hurt, you know. Oh, you're so sensitive, Henry. I really like that. Fact is, Monica, that oversex limpets just aren't my type. Oh. <laughs> what is your type? Um... Well, since you ask, um, I think you may be. Me? Yes. <laughs> Do you fancy a walk in the park? <laughs> Italian food. Love it. Me too. Um, Beethoven? My favourite. Mine too. <laughs> Mum! Hello. Mrs. Haddon. Hi. Hi. <laughs> You don't seem unduly concerned. Oh, it takes a lot more than that to shock me, Richard. I'm a child of the 60s, remember? Oh. Ah, sorry. Excuse me. <coughs> I'm just my daughter and her friend. <laughs> well, Carol, if it isn't Tweedledum and Tweedledee. <laughs> or should I say, Boney owns Juliet. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm a doctor. 